Now, we really are faced with two different pieces of legislation at this point. One is the Boehner Plan, or the Budget Control Act of 2011 that the House will be voting on very soon, I believe. And then also there's another plan, the Reed Plan here in the Senate. As configured, though they have some similarities though, as configured now, they're different plans. They're different approaches. One gets us on the road to recovery. One, very importantly, gets us on the road to recovery. The other one doesn't. And so let's take just a minute to talk about each of those respective plans. Make sure we understand them so that as they're voted on in the House and then we face these important votes, hopefully this evening or tomorrow, but very soon, that we understand the differences between these approaches so that we can find ways to come together on an approach that we can pass in this chamber, but also in the House, and an approach that truly moves our country forward. Now, under the Boehner proposal, savings of more than $900 billion, $917 billion in savings must be provided in order to raise the debt ceiling. And that then allows the first tranche of increase in the debt ceiling in the amount of $900 billion. But those savings have to be identified first. Savings that are as much in, and, in fact, more than the amount of the debt ceiling increase. Then the second tranche, to increase the debt ceiling beyond that $900 billion, an additional $1.8 trillion in savings has to be identified and provided. $1.8 trillion in savings. So that's $2.7 trillion in savings to get this country back on the road to financial health in order to raise the debt ceiling. And that's fundamentally important because that's the fundamental issue. It doesn't fully solve the problem, but it gets us on the right path, and we've got to get going on the right path. That second tranche of savings is found by a committee, a committee of six members of the Senate, three Democrat, three Republican, six members of the House, three Republican, three Democrat, a bipartisan committee. I think that committee offers us real opportunity. Here's why. The committee has to come up with recommendations for real savings by November. It's bipartisan, and it's a straight up or down vote in the House or the Senate to put those savings in place, and those savings must be identified before we raise the debt ceiling further. So it's something that we have to do. And let's think about that committee for a minute, Mr. President. That's a committee that can bring in the ideas of the Gang of Six. That's a committee that can bring in the Simpson-Bowles Commission concepts. That's a committee that can bring in tax reform. That's a committee that can bring in entitlement reform. And these are the things that we're going to need to address to get this economy going and get control of our spending. I know, Mr. President, you've put together many pieces of legislation that have been bipartisan and have been very important for this country. And I think that this committee truly offers us that opportunity. And I hope it's something that we in the Senate can find a way to come together on and that we can get our colleagues in the House to, to join us. In my, in my view, uh, I think we do need to engage in tax reform. I think the right kind of pro-growth tax reform, some of the concepts brought forth by the Gang of Six, can truly help, help us to stimulate economic activity. And I think the real way to get revenue for this country is through economic growth, not higher taxes, through economic growth. Expand the pie, the rising tide that lifts all boats. So if, if we can engage in tax reform in a way that stimulates economic growth and you get this economy growing, you get people back to work, you reduce that unemployment rate of more than 9%, that's good for every American, but it also is the way you really create revenue to help get us out of this deficit and debt at the same time that we control spending. I absolutely believe it can work, and I think that we need to convince our members that uh, we need to come together and make it happen. The, the Boehner proposal also includes a balanced budget amendment, and I know that's been an issue of great debate in this Senate, and I believe we need a balanced budget amendment. I've said it many times before. I come from the background as a governor in my state. We have a balanced budget amendment. We balance our budget every year. 49 states have either a constitutional or a statutory requirement to balance their budget. I think we need that fiscal discipline 
in Washington, D.C. I think we needed to make sure that we don't get ourselves into this situation uh, in future years for ourselves or for these young people we see here today with us. Now, when you compare that approach, when you compare the approach of the Boehner plan, it is different than the Reed plan. And it's important that we understand that. The Reed plan does uh, provide that we identify $900 billion in savings. But it then provides that once we've identified that $900 billion in savings, we raise the debt ceiling by $2.7 trillion. So unlike the Boehner proposal, where we're finding more savings, significantly more savings than we're increasing the debt ceiling, this is just the opposite. We're increasing the debt ceiling $2.7 trillion, but only requiring $900 billion in savings. That doesn't get at the root problem. That continues the underlying problem of too much spending and too much debt. It, like the Boehner proposal, the Reed proposal, does provide for a committee. That's important. That's good. But unlike the Boehner proposal, it doesn't require that that committee bring back the savings and that we put those savings in place before the debt ceiling is increased. It doesn't have the teeth. We need to make sure that we get this job done for the American people. And that's a problem. So they are different approaches. And it doesn't include a balanced budget amendment. Now, there's been talk that um, we must work together and find a way to bridge the gap and the differences. And I, and I think that's true. We have got to find ways to come together. Time is growing short. We need to get it done now. But I think it's the approach identified in the Boehner plan that we need to take. We need to get our colleagues in this chamber to join with us to do it. It's the only piece of legislation that can pass the House but more importantly, it's a big step forward. It's a big step in the right direction for our country.